Bizarre Diseases and Medical Conditions Iceberg. Today we'll be looking at some of the most infamous and egregious diseases that have plagued mankind. Since the dawn of time, humans' biggest adversary has been disease. It is usually categorized as non-infectious or infectious, with various mortality rates depending on the disease. As always, the iceberg is organized by obscurity. The most well-known diseases are towards the top, while the least known are towards the bottom. So if you see something that you feel like should be higher or lower in the iceberg, take it up with the person that made it. Now sit back, relax, and enjoy the video. Otoa Coriasis. Otoa Coriasis is a progressive hearing disorder that affects the structure of the inner ear. It interferes with the transmission of sound, leaving its mark on the individual's ability to perceive sound around them. Early symptoms often include gradual hearing loss, particularly in low frequency sound. As the disorder advances, individuals may struggle to discern speech in noisy environments and experience a feeling of fullness in the affected ear. Otoa coriasis is primarily caused by ear mites or ticks that burrow their way into the host ear. They make the confined space their den and often reproduce larvae, specifically along the ear walls and eardrum. Many people who have suffered from this claim that they feel feel much more pain and sensitivity when their ear has more larva than ticks. If left untreated, it can cause severe hearing loss and affecting individuals' ability to communicate effectively, engage in social interactions, and participate fully in daily activities. The good news is that there are effective treatments options available for otoacariasis, ranging from ear medications to surgical interventions. In cases where hearing aids are insufficient, a surgical procedure called stapedictomy can be performed. This procedure involves replacing the fixed stapes bone with a prosthetic device restoring the transmission of sound vibrations to the inner ear. After treatment, rehabilitation, and hearing therapies play a crucial role in helping individuals adapt to their improved hearing and regain their confidence in various listening environments. Fatal Familial Insomnia Fatal Familial Insomnia, or FFI, is a rare hereditary disorder that strikes at the heart of sleep. It robs its victims of slumber and slowly unravels their minds and bodies. Sleep deprivation leads to a cascade of effects, starting with insomnia, anxiety, and confusion. As the disease progresses, individuals experience a loose hallucinations, weight loss, and cognitive decline. The impact reverberates beyond the individual, tearing apart families as they helplessly watch the unraveling of their loved one's insanity. FFI is caused by a genetic mutation that affects that PRNP gene, leading to the accumulation of abnormal proteins called prions in the brain. These prions disrupt the brain's normal functions, particularly in the thalamus, a region critical for regulating sleep. As a result, the body's sleep-wake cycle collapses and plunges the afflicted into a perpetual state of wakefulness. Tragically, there is no known cure for FFI. The disease progresses relentlessly and its fatality is inevitable. The duration from onset to death can vary, but is typical within a few months to a few years. The battle against FFI is a daunting one as effective treatments remain elusive. Current approaches focus on managing symptoms and providing comfort through palliative care. Leprosy. Leprosy, scientifically termed Hansen's disease, is an ancient and slow progressing bacterial infection caused by Mycobacterium leprae. Its effects are most pronounced on the skin and peripheral nerves. The disease may manifest as discolored patches of skin, nodules, or even loss of sensation in extremities. As it progresses, it can lead to muscle weakness, numbness, and deformities of the hands, feet, and face. The visible signs of leprosy have historically resulted in stigmatization and exclusion, pushing those affected to the fringes of society. It is believed to spread through prolonged close contact with an infected person, although the exact mechanism is not fully understood. The disease thrives in regions of poor sanitation, overcrowding, and limited access to health care. Factors such as genetic susceptibility also play a role in determining who may contract the disease. If left untreated, the nerve damage and secondary infections that accompany the disease can lead to severe disabilities and complications that can be life-threatening. Over the decades, medical advancements have transformed the outlook of leprosy. Today, the disease is treatable with a combination of antibiotics. Early diagnosis and consistent treatment can prevent nerve damage and halt disease progression, allowing affected individuals to lead fulfilling lives. Physiotherapy and rehabilitation play a vital role in restoring lost functions. Ongoing research aims to improve treatment and develop vaccines to further combat leprosy and reduce its impact on individuals and communities. River blindness. River blindness, also known as onchorcerciasis. River blindness, also known as onchorcerciasis, is a debilitating parasitic infection caused by the microscopic worm onchorcerca pulvulus. Its effects are insidious, often going unnoticed until irreversible damage is done. The infection spreads through the bite of the infected black fly flies, which breed in fast-flowing rivers and streams. When these flies bite a person, they deposit tiny larvae under the skin. These larvae mature into worms that can live up to 15 years within the human body. The primary symptoms of river blindness include intense itching, skin rashes, and the formation of painful nodules under the skin. But the most devastating consequence is its impact on the vision. As the parasites migrate to the eyes, they can cause inflammation, leading to gradual blindness. The afflicted individuals, often unable to work, care for their families, or participate in their
their communities become trapped in a cycle of poverty and isolation. This is due to this sickness being primarily where there's limited access to health care, clean water, and sanitation. The fatality of river blindness is not solely measured on the death toll, but in the erosion of dignity and dependence of potential. Individuals robbed of their sight become dependent on others for even the simplest of tasks, erasing their ability to contribute to their communities. Efforts to combat river blindness have intensified over the years. Organizations like the WHO and local health care providers are implementing mass drug administration programs, distributing medications that can kill the parasite's larva and halt its spread. Morgulons. Morgulons is a term used to describe a range of perplexing symptoms including crawling sensations on the skin, the presence of fibers, and skin lesions. These symptoms often lead to severe itching, discomfort, and a deep sensation of distress. The exact cause of more lesions has not been confirmed, and it is subject to much debate. Some theories suggest that the fibers observed during studies are either a result of environmental factors or are self-inflicted by individuals who are experiencing a psychological condition. Despite extensive research, no specific underlying cause or infectious agent has been definitively identified. This uncertainty has contributed to the controversy surrounding the condition. Treating margillans possesses a significant challenge due to the lack of clear understanding of its cause. Most notably, most doctors provide psychological support for the condition as there is nothing that indicates external factors causing the itching. One thing to take note is those who are affected by margillans often feel marginalized and dismissed, having further fueled the debate between what causes the disease or condition itself. Advocacy groups and individuals who suffer from the condition have called for more research and recognition of the condition. Kuru Kuru, often referred to as the laughing disease, is a rare and devastating neurodegenerative disease that once plagued the four people of Papua New Guinea. The disease is characterized by a range of neurological symptoms including muscle tremors, loss of coordination, and an uncontrollable laughter, a macabre irony that gives Kuru its unsettling name. The cause of Kuru was eventually traced back to a cultural practice of these people. The consumption of deceased relatives. Kuru is caused by accumulation of abnormal proteins called prions in the brain. These misfolded proteins trigger a chain reaction, leading to the destruction of the brain tissue and the onset of disease's debilitating symptoms. The fatality of Kuru is inescapable. As the disease progresses, individuals become increasingly disabled, losing the ability to walk, speak, and perform basic tasks. Most tragically, Kuru leads to death within a year of the onset of the symptoms. The impact of Kuru was particularly devastating during the mid-20th century, with entire families and communities affected. The disease cast a shadow over the four people and prompted critical scientific investigation. Regrettably, there is no cure for Kuru. Medical treatment options are limited and focused on alleviating symptoms, providing comfort and offering support to affected individuals and their families. However, good news, the discovery of Kuru's prion-based mechanism led to significant advancements in our understanding of prion diseases, which also include creutzfeldt jakob disease and variant creutzfeldt jakob disease. I'm, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Hypertrichro Hypertrichosis, often referred to as werewolf syndrome, is a genetic disorder characterized by excessive hair growth on the face and body. Its effects can be dramatic, drawing attention and curiosity. The condition varies in its manifestation from fine hair covering the entire body to thick, coarse hair in specific areas. While it does not pose significant health risk, hypertrichosis can lead to social and emotional challenges due to the societal norms and expectations. The cause of hypertrichosis lies within the intricate dance of genetics. It can be inherited through a combination of genetic factors factors and influence hair growth patterns, follicle development, and hormonal balance. In certain cases, it may also be associated with underlying medical conditions or triggered by the use of certain medications. For most individuals, the condition is genetically determined. While there is no cure for this condition, treatment options aim to manage the excessive hair growth and improve the individual's quality of life. Hair removal methods such as shaving, waxing, and laser treatments can provide temporary relief. However, it's important to tailor treatments to the individual's unique circumstances, ensuring both physical and emotional emotional well-being. Psychogenic death. Psychogenic death, also known as Kikomori syndrome, is a rare and puzzling condition in which individuals withdraw from the world, often leading to self-imposed isolation and gradual decline in physical health. Those affected by psychogenic death may become so socially withdrawn that they neglect basic needs like eating and grooming. The self-imposed isolation can lead to a profound decline in physical and mental health. The exact cause of this condition remains a subject of ongoing research and debate. It is thought to be influenced by a complex interplay of psychological social, and cultural factors. Stress, trauma, cultural pressures, and an individual's susceptibility to emotional distress are believed to be contributors to the onset of the psychogenic death. The treatment for this condition is a multi-faced approach. Mental health professionals provide therapeutic interventions such as psychotherapy and cognitive behavioral therapy to address the underlying psychological factors. Family support, community engagement, and gradual exposure to social interactions 
are crucial elements in helping individuals gradually re-engage with the world around them. I believe psychogenic depth serves as a poignant reminder to the intricate connections between the mind and the body. Cutaneous horns. Cutaneous horns, also known as cornu cutaneum, are unique skin growths that project outward resembling the shape of animal horns. While often benign, these formations are usually visually striking and raise concerns about underlying health. The effects of cutaneous horns vary in appearance and size. They can develop on any part of the body exposed to sunlight and may be associated with underlying skin conditions. Cutaneous horns are primarily composed of keratin, the protein found in hair and nails. They develop when there is an overproduction of curtaneocytes in the skin's outermost layer. While the exact cause is not always clear, cutaneous horns can be triggered by a variety of factors, including chronic sun exposure, skin injuries, viral infections, and certain genetic conditions. Treatments for cutaneous horns involve addressing the underlying cause and, in many cases, surgically removing the growths. Dermatologists assess the horn size, location, and potential for malignancy before recommending a course of action. However, the most common approach is surgical removal. Canine transmissible venereal tumor. Just for sake of time, I'm going to call this one CTVT, and I'm also not going to show pictures of this condition because it is pretty gross. If you want to look it up, by all means, go for it. CTVT is a rare and interesting type of cancer that affects dogs. Its effects are most pronounced in the genital area, but it can also manifest on the face, mouth, and other areas of the body. CTVT typically presents as a visible, fleshy, cauliflower-like mass. While it may be alarming for dog owners, the good news is CTVT is generally not life-threatening and can be successfully treated. Despite the presence of this tumor, many dogs continue to enjoy their lives, showcasing the remarkable resilience and spirit of the four-legged friends. The cause of CTVT is unique among cancers. It's a type of cancer that is transmitted between dogs through physical touch, particularly during mating and close interactions, from the transfer of live tumor cells from one dog to another. The treatment for this condition is highly effective and typically involves surgical removal of the tumor. This procedure is often straightforward and can be performed by a veterinarian. In cases where surgical removal is not feasible, chemotherapy or radiation therapy can be considered. Fortunately, CTVT is generally responsive to these treatments, leading to favorable outcomes for affected dogs. Porphyria. Porphyria is a group of rare genetic disorders that impact the body's ability to produce heme, a crucial component of hemoglobin. Its effects can be diverse and sometimes debilitating. The symptoms range from mild to severe and can include abdominal pain, skin sensitivity to sunlight, neurological issues, and even psychiatric disturbances. The impact of porphyria varies from person to person, but many individuals learn to adapt, find ways to navigate the challenges, and achieve a sensory normalcy. It arises from genetic mutations that affect the enzymes responsible for heme production. These mutations disrupt the delicate balance of the heme synthesis pathways, leading to an accumulation of porphyrins and their precursors. The exact genetic mutations and patterns of inheritance can vary depending on the specific type of porphyria. Both genetic predisposition and environmental factors play a role in triggering symptoms. The treatment for this condition involves a multi-faced approach aimed at managing symptoms and minimizing triggers. Lifestyle modifications, medications, and avoidance of known triggers such as sunlight or certain medications are key components. In more severe cases, individuals may require heme infusions or other specialized therapies to alleviate acute symptoms and prevent complications. Genetic chimerism. Genetic chimerism, a rare and intriguing condition, occurs when an individual's body contains cells with distinct genetic compositions. This can lead to a striking array of effects ranging from skin color variations to unique patterns of freckles or hair. The cause of genetic chimerism lies in the complex dance of early embryonic development. It can occur when fraternal twins merge in the womb, combining their genetic material to create a single individual with a mosaic cell populations. Additionally, medical interventions such as organ or bone marrow transplants can lead to genetic chimerisms as the transplanted cells establish themselves with the recipient's body. In most cases, genetic chimerism does not require treatment as it is a natural occurrence. However, medical monitoring and management may be necessary if the condition is associated with health concerns or complications. For individuals who have undergone organ or bone marrow transplants, medical professionals closely monitor the interactions between the donor and the recipient's cells to ensure the success of the transplant and the recipient's overall well-being. Gastrophilisis. Gastrophilisis, commonly known as bot fly infestation, is a parasitic condition that affects horses. Its effects can range from mild discomfort to potential serious health issues. The larva of bot flies attached to the horse's stomach lining, leading to symptoms such as poor appetite, weight loss, discomfort, and digestive disturbances. The bot fly lays its larva on the horse's hairs, and when the horse licks and grooms itself, it ingests the eggs. Veterinarians may prescribe deworming medications to treat and target the bot fly larva, while surgery may be warranted in extreme circumstances. This is a very common sickness among horses, 
them with regular deworming schedules, proper hygiene practices, and pasture management. This condition is usually very treatable and is usually gone within a few weeks to months. Exploding head syndrome. Exploding head syndrome, I'm gonna call it EHS just to keep it short, is a unique and startling sleep disorder characterized by loud and vivid auditory hallucinations, often described as a loud explosion, crashing, or banging. Despite its alarming name, it's not physically harmful. The effects of EHS can lead to sudden awakenings, increased heart rate, and anxiety. Individuals who experience it may feel disoriented and struggle to return to sleep. The exact cause of EHS remains elusive, though it's believed to be related to the brain's auditory system and sleep-wake transitions. Some theories suggest that abrupt shifts in the brain's neural activity during the transition between wakefulness to sleep, or vice versa, triggers the hallucinatory experience. While there's no specific cure for EHS, treatment focuses on managing symptoms and improving sleep quality, relaxation techniques, maintaining a consistent sleep schedule, and creating a calming sleep environment can help reduce the frequency and intensity of the episodes. In some cases, if the condition significantly disrupts a person's life, doctors may prescribe certain medications to regulate sleep patterns and address associated anxiety. Researchers continue to study this intriguing phenomena, seeking to unravel the underlying mechanisms and unveil the secrets of our sensory experiences. Pain Asymbolia Pain asymbolia Embolia is a neurological condition in which individuals are unable to perceive or fully experience pain. Those affected still feel the sensation of pain, but do not suffer from the discomfort of it. An example is someone placing their hand in scorching hot water. They recognize the feeling of their skin being burned, but it lacks the feeling of agony. The effects of pain as embolia may lead individuals to unintentionally injure themselves as they lack the typical warning signs that pain provides. The cause of pain as embolia is rooted in the complex neural pathways that underlie pain perception. It can result from brain lesions or damage to areas of the brain responsible for processing pain signals. Typically, brain trauma or injuries, strokes, or other neurological conditions can disrupt the intricate network of neurons that convey pain sensations, leading to unusual states of pain as embolia. Currently, there is no specific treatment to reverse pain as embolia. Management focuses on ensuring the safety and well-being of individuals affected by the condition. Strategies may include regular medical checkups, close monitoring for injuries, and education education about potential risk. Individuals may need to be vigilant in protecting themselves from harm. Researchers continue to study this condition to unravel the mysteries of pain processing, contributing to a deeper understanding of the complexities that shape our sensory experiences. Spina bifida. Spinal bifida is a congenital neural tube defect that occurs early in pregnancy, affecting the development of the spine and spinal cord. Its effects range from mild to severe impact to mobility, sensory function, and overall quality of life. Several more effects of spina bifida can include paralysis, Analysis, muscle weakness, sensory issues, and difficulties with bowel and bladder control. Insufficient intake of folic acid and genetic predisposition are among the factors that cause and increase the risk of spina bifida. Surgical interventions are often performed shortly after birth to repair the spinal opening and minimize nerve damage. Ongoing medical care, physical therapy, assistance devices, and adaptive technologies play crucial roles in managing the condition. PICA. PICA is a behavioral disorder characterized by the consumption of non-nutritious, non-food substances. Its effects can can range from mild to severe, potentially leading to medical complications and distress. The effects of pica depend on the type of substance ingested. Common substances include clay, chalk, ice, paper, and even non-edible items such as coins or buttons. The exact cause of pica is not fully understood, but is believed to involve a combination of psychological and environmental factors. Pica can occur as a response to nutritional deficits, developmental disorders, or conditions such as autism. Maybe that's why I like chewing ice. It may also stem from cultural practices, sensory, exploration, or emotional factors. Treatment for pica depends on the underlying cause and severity of the behavior. It often involves a multidisciplinary approach, including medical, nutritional, and psychological interventions, addressing nutritional deficiencies, providing alternate sources of sensory stimulation, and implementing behavioral therapy or common strategies to manage pica behaviors. Alcaptonuria. Alcaptonuria is a rare inherited metabolic disorder that affects the body's ability to process certain amino acids. Its effects can impact various systems leading to a range of physical and health-related symptoms. The effects of l are primarily observed in the bones, joints, and connective tissue. Over time, these tissue can become discolored and damaged, leading to joint pain, stiffness, and other complications. Despite the challenges posed by this disorder, those affected find ways to adapt, seeking medical care and making lifestyle adjustments to manage their symptoms. Currently, there is no known cure for this disorder, but treatment focuses on managing symptoms and improving those affected quality of life.
Depending on the severity of the symptoms, treatment may involve pain management, physical therapy, joint replacement surgery, and other medications to alleviate discomfort. Okay, this next one is great. I, I've seen so many memes of this that I thought it was just a meme, but um, no. We're gonna talk about clinical lycanthropy. Clinical lycanthropy is a rare psychiatric condition in which individuals believe they can transform into animals, often a wolf or other creature. Its, it's effects can vary in intensity. <clears throat> Sorry. Its effects can vary in intensity, leading to profound changes in behavior, self-perception, and reality. The effects of clinical lycanthropy can manifest in altered speech patterns, movements, and behaviors as individuals embrace their perceived animal identities. This is a real Look disorder. <laughs> Those affected by clinical lycanthropy often grapple with distressing experiences, attempting to navigate the blurred boundaries between perceived and objective reality. The exact cause of clinical lycanthropy is not fully understood, but is believed to stem from a combination of psychological, neurological, and cultural factors. I can name maybe three influences of this. Brain anomalies, delusional disorders, schizophrenia may contribute to the development of the belief in transformation. Treatment for clinical lycanthropy involves a comprehensive and compassionate approach, often combining psychotherapy, medication, and support from mental health professionals. Cognitive behavior therapy, reality testing, and antipsychotic medications may help individuals challenge their delusional beliefs and improve their overall well-being. Piebaldalism is a rare genetic disorder that affects the pigmentation of the skin and hair. Its effects can create distinct patterns of unpigmented or white skin patches amid normally pigmented areas. This is usually most notable on darker skin tones. The effects of piebaldalism can vary from subtle patches to more pronounced large areas of depigmentation. Piebaldalism is caused by mutation in the KIT gene, which plays a role in the development of melanocytes, the cells responsible for producing skin, hair, and eye color. The mutation disrupts the normal migration of melanocytes during embryonic development, leading to the characteristic patches of unpigmented skin seen in piebaldalism. While there is no specific cure for this disorder, treatment typically focuses on managing cosmetic concerns and improving quality of life. Xenomelia Xenomelia, also known as Body Integrity Identity Disorder, or BIID, is a complex psychological condition where individuals feel a profound and distressing mismatch between their internal body image and their physical reality. The effects of xenomelia can lead individuals to experience an overwhelming desire for specific body modifications or amputations, often believing that these changes will align their physical bodies with their perceived identity. The exact cause of xenomelia is not fully understood, but it is believed to involve a complex interplay of psychological, neurological, and environmental factors. Brain body maps, which represent the brain's perception of the body's physical appearance, may play a role in the development of xenomelia. It is believed that discrepancies in the brain body maps are what cause this condition to develop. Treatment for xenomelia focuses on addressing the distressing and discomfort experienced by individuals while helping them navigate their feelings and perceptions. Most commonly, psychotherapy, including cognitive behavioral therapy and mindfulness techniques, can help individuals develop coping strategies and a healthier relationship with their body image. Alien Hand Syndrome Alien Hand Syndrome is a neurological disorder in which an individual's hand appears to have a will of its own, acting in ways contrary to the person's intentions. The effects of Alien Hand Syndrome can include involuntary reaching, grabbing, manipulating objects, often without the person's conscious control. The exact cause of Alien Hand Syndrome is not fully understood, but it is believed to be a result of disruptions in the brain's communication pathways, particularly between the two hemispheres. Brain injuries such as strokes, brain surgery, and neurodegenerative disorders can lead to the disconnect between the person's conscious intentions and the involuntary movements of the affected hand. Treatments for alien hand syndrome is aimed at managing the symptoms and improving the person's quality of life. However, there's not a true cure to this condition. In some cases, however, medication that targets specific neurotransmitters may help reduce the frequency and intensity of the involuntary movements. Occupational therapy can also play a role in enhancing control and coordination. Teratoma. Teratoma is a type of tumor that can contain tissues derived from different germ cell layers, often giving rise to a diverse array of cell types. The effects of teratomas can range from being asymptomatic to causing discomfort, pain, or functional impairment due to the size impact of the surrounding structures. Those affected by teratomas often require medical attention as the tumors have the potential to disrupt normal bodily functions and compromise the affected area. The exact cause of teratomas is not fully understood, but they are believed to be a result from 
errors during embryonic development. However, the most common treatment for teratomas are typically surgical removal, especially if the tumor is causing symptoms or posing at risk to the patient's health. Elephantiasis. Elephantiasis, also known as lymphatic filariasis, is a parasitic infection that leads to severe and disfiguring swelling in the limbs and other body parts. The effects of elephantiasis result from the obstruction of lymphatic vessels by microscopic parasitic worms, causing fluid accumulation and tissue swelling, which can be extremely debilitating. Those living with this condition often face mobile difficulties, pain, and stigma, as the condition can significantly impact those affected's quality of life. Elephantiasis is transmitted through mosquito bites. The worms that come from the mosquitoes, known as filarial worms, damage the lymphatic vessels and disrupt the normal flow of lymphatic fluid. Treatment for this condition involves a multi-pronged process focused on alleviating symptoms, preventing further transmission, and improving the patient's well-being. Antiparasitic medications are used to kill the worms and halt their reproduction, while measures such such as mosquito control and health education aimed to prevent new infections. Chromohydrosis. Chromohydrosis is a rare condition in which sweat takes on unusual colors, often leaving individuals with colorful sweat stains on their skin or clothing. Its effects can range from curious to mildly distressing. The effects of this condition can manifest as sweat that appears blue, green, red, or even black, leaving those affected puzzled or seeking explanations. The exact cause of this condition is believed to involve an interaction between sweat glands, pigments, and other other compounds. However, there's not a decisive answer for why this condition occurs. Treatment for chromohydrosis focuses on managing the symptoms and alleviating any distress caused by the condition because, as you know, if you start to sweat green, I don't really think I'd be too excited. Dermatologists may recommend gentle cleansing, avoiding trigger factors, and providing emotional support to individuals seeking relief from the visual effects of colored sweat. However, as I said before, this is a condition that's not entirely understood and there's still a lot of research to be taken and to fully understand why this occurs. Pentachromacy. Pentachromacy is a rare genetic trait where individuals possess an additional type of cone cell in their eyes, allowing them to perceive a broader range of colors than the average person. Its effects are a vibrant and captivating experience on the world. From what I can understand, its effects are similar to experiencing the world through a kaleidoscope, just not as intense. The colors that individuals experience are much more vibrant than the average colors that people who don't have this disorder. Unlike most of the conditions on this chart, this one, I feel like you can look at it as more beneficial than debilitating. Individuals with pentachromacy work with eye care professionals to better understand and appreciate their unique visual abilities. Due to this not being a debilitating disorder, there isn't a treatment for this as it is a natural genetic mutation, and generally those affected do not see this as anything that ruins their quality of life. And that is the Bizarre Diseases and Medical Conditions Iceberg. I'm probably going to make this chart into a two-part series just because in this first video, I just wanted to go through certain conditions that I personally found were intriguing. Now, if you guys are interested and this video does well, I can do a second part going through the rest of the conditions on here. Most of the ones that I didn't go through, I personally know or have heard about prior to making this. If you're still sticking around, I do appreciate you. Also, let me know what your opinions are on some of the conditions that we went over. A lot of these were just very interesting to me and I've never heard of some of these things, especially the uh, clinical lycanthropy. I still can't get over that one. We also recently hit 1,000 subscribers. So I'd like to say thank you to everyone who has subscribed. Each like, subscription, and view helps me out a bunch, so I do appreciate everyone who's taken the time to do that. If you haven't already and you've stuck around this long, I highly suggest doing it. It's free and it helps me out a lot. This is sleepy and I will see you guys later.